All right, so remember back in Calc 1 when you first were introduced to integrals, you added up a bunch of different rectangles in order to get the area under the curve, and that was basically just to give you a real physical meaning to the integral. Um, and then you learned that you could actually do this with the process of, of, you know, we have all these tricks to integration and integration of functions. But before that, you added up rectangles. Now we're going to do the exact same thing in three dimensions, but this time we're going to add up boxes. So what I've got here for you is a picture of, we've got a hemisphere. The hemisphere is our shape here. Um, so this hemisphere here and here you can kind of see in there, that's the shape. And there are four different pictures here, um, each one depicting a different estimation to the volume under that sphere. And so just notice that this first one just has like one, it just has one rectangle. The second one just has what's that nine rectangles. This next one, I'm not going to count them, but you can see that there's a lot more rectangles. Um, and the more rectangles, the better the estimation of that volume would be. All right, so with this Riemann sum, we're going to be finding volume, um, and we want to add up. Um, we want to add up rectangular rectangular boxes. So we're going to be adding up. Each rectangular box is going to have a base, and we're going to multiply that by a height. The base is going to represent some length times a width. So the base is going to have some length to it, like right there. So a length and then times a width for each different base. And these will be the same for every rectangle that you're that you're using that base won't change you want to keep that consistent and then we will multiply that by a by a height now for the height you can use lots of different points so before when we found the Riemann sum we could either use the left side of the rectangle the middle of the rectangle or the right hand side of the rectangle those were usual places we would choose to find the height but now that we have a box we actually could use one of the four corners of the box or we could use the middle of the box to estimate the height and it looks like in this picture that I'm drawing on that it really was the midpoint that was used to find the height because the midpoint is kind of where each one of these boxes matches up with that, with that sphere. So I think on this one, the midpoints were used. But we'll use, all, we'll, we'll use different ones. All right, so that's the idea of the Riemann sum. And just for the notation for later on, what we're going to be doing with these Riemann sums and when we want to find volume, I'm going to write out an equation here and then I'll explain it. We're going to take a limit as m and n go to infinity. We are going to be adding from i equals 1 to m, and then also from j equals 1 to n. The function, that's going to give us our height of our x sub i j and y sub i j, and let's maybe, I'm going to maybe star those times a delta A. And when we do this, because we've got a double sum, we're going to get a double integral over some region of our function. It'll have x's and y's in there. And we're going to integrate that with respect to area. Okay, so let me do some explaining here. 
So these X's and Y's, the X's and Y's right in there, that is going to be the, say the midpoint as an example. So the midpoint or maybe the like lower left point. Either way, we'll specify kind of what we want to pick for the point. Now that F, once you plug in those points into there, that gives you the height. Sorry, if I could try to spell here. All right, so that gives you the height of the rectangle. This change of A is the base of it. So this change of A is the base. And so what we're doing is adding up, so we are adding up base times height of all these different rectangles. So the reason that we have these I's and these J's is that we're going over kind of what position we're in along X's and along Y's. So each different X and each different Y, um, each different X has a sub kind of interval in each different y has that kind of same interval in there. So basically we're just saying let's add up all the midpoints. When we plug those in and get a height, we're going to add height times the base together. Then once we start to take m and n really small, what we're doing is, or really big, I'm sorry, is we are creating, like this picture starts to do, infinitely many rectangles, in which case we get an exact area which can be represented by the integral. Okay, so next I'm going to do an example of how to actually calculate this Riemann sum um, with some functions and some numbers in there. And then later on, we're going to go and we're going to talk about actually how to calculate these double integrals, um, kind of just like you did in Calc 1, where you added stuff up and then you figured out how to do the integral later. All right, so we're going to estimate the volume under this function 4x plus for y, we're going to use the upper right hand corners of each sub rectangle and we're going to look at this under the region defined by where x goes from 0 to 3 and y goes from 0 to 2 and we are going to divide x's into three intervals and y's into two intervals. So that's what that m and n says in there. Um, and going back to that other one, that, uh, that, that last notation I gave you where m went to infinity, that was saying divide the number of intervals in the x-axis into infinity, divide the number of y intervals, have infinite amount of intervals. Um, and those i's and j's were specifying the um, the sub intervals. Okay, so what we're going to do first is kind of define these these sub intervals, and I always do this with a graph. So I'm going to do a graph of x, y. X goes from zero to three, one, two, three, and y goes from one to two. Okay, so we have this rectangle right here. Okay, so that rectangle is our region, and we want to divide x into three different regions. So there's three different regions that we're dividing x into, and then we want to divide y into two different regions. So we want to divide the interval between 1 and 2, we want to divide that in half. We want that to be in two different regions. So what we get is sub-rectangles. All right, now, when we calculate height, we want to use the upper right corner of all of these sub-rectangles. So in all of these, I'm going to put in the upper right corner into all of these rectangles. And now let's list out what that upper right-hand corner is, like what those points are for each one of these. So let me put some numbers on this graph so I can keep track of this. One, two, three, that'd be one, that'd be 1.5, and that'd be two. All right, so the points that we have for the upper right corners 
Um, we've got 1, 1 1.5. We've got 1, 2. We've got 2, 1.5, and then we've got 2, 2. We've got 3, 1.5, and then we've got uh, 3, 2. All right, so there are all of my upper right-hand corners right there, all listed out. Now, the height of each of these rectangles, we are going to find by finding the function at each one of these points, and that function was given by 4x plus 4y. So we're going to take each of these points, plug it in, and get a height. All right, so this first one, when we plug in 1 and 1 half, so we're taking, let's see, 1 half is y, multiply that by 4, so we get 6 plus 4. Four. So on this first one, we get 4 and then 6, so that'll be 10. When we plug in 1 and 2, we get 4 plus 2 times 4, that's 8, so we get 12. When we plug in 2 and 1.5, 2 times 4 is 8. And then 1.5 times 4, we already figured that out, that was 6, so that'll give us 14. When we plug 2 and 2, so I'm just plugging them into this formula here. So 2 times 4 is 8, and then 2 times 4 again is 8, so we get 16. There's definitely a pattern here, huh? So 3 times 4, that would be 12 plus 6, so that does give us 18. And then we'll have 12 plus 8, which will give us 20. There are all of our heights. All right, so we want to, when we add these up, we want to add up base times height. So let's find the base. And when we're talking about base, we're talking about the base of one of these rectangles, just the area of one of those rectangles. So if we do that for just one of them, we've got one in the x direction, and in the y direction, they're all 0.5 tall, so these are all the base is going to be 0.5. Okay, so now we're going to add up base times height. So we want to take that base, which is 0.5, and multiply it by the height. So for the first one, that's 10. For the next one, that's 12. For the next one, we take 0.5 times 14. For the next one, we take 0.5 times 16. For the next one, we take 0.5 times 18, uh oh, I'm running out of room, and then next one we take 0.5 times 20. And the way that I usually do this is I do a base and then I add up all the heights. So I normally don't write out kind of base times height for every single one. All right, and if we add up all of these together and divide it. If we add up all of them together, we should get 88, and then divide that by 0.5, and we should get 44. All right, so the estimate of volume that's under this three-dimensional object, but we used, we used basically three-dimensional boxes to find that. If we wanted to estimate that volume, we would get 44. All right, I think that's it for now. And after this, we'll start finding the actual integrals.